This is the image I chose for today. And first, we have to analyze the image and identify the subject. You might be tempted to believe the bread is the subject because it is the brightest part of the image. But this is a story about the baker, so we have to do an edit in such a way to bring him out and make him stand out from the image. How will I do that? The first thing I like to do is separate my subject from the background. To do so, I will go into my layer panel, click on the plus, and add a layer with the same image. Increase the opacity at 100%, and now we have the same image in two different layers. With the top layer selected, I will like to do a portrait background remover. And no, we are not going to change the background and put something crazy behind it. We will use the same background. We just want to separate the men from the background so we can isolate it and work on them separately. Once I remove the background, if you go here in my bottom layer and I hide this layer, you can see that Luminar Neo made a great, did a great job separating our subject from the background. So now that I know on the top layer I have my subject, I can work on him separately. Looking at this image, I see he has a pretty big shadow on his face here. And I would like to brighten that up a little bit. And then on this other side, it's a little bit too bright, so I would like to darken it a little bit. To do so, I will go into the develop module. Make sure you're on the top layer where you have your subject. And I'll just bring up the exposure to brighten those shadow areas. And now I will mask it in by using a radial gradient. And I will put my radial gradient somewhere around here. Now, if you're new to masking, what is red is where the effect is being applied. And where there's transparent, there is no effect happening in there. And now we're seeing that our radial gradient, it's affecting the outer part of our radiant. So we have to invert it. And now we can affect just that half of the face that we wanted to brighten up. Now, I know the brightest part of the radial gradient is on the background, but remember, we removed the background from this layer, so nothing will get brightened over there. We will just affect the part of the face. So, we'll position this in such a way to work, and then I will go to Adjustments, and as you can see, if I go before and after, before and after, we just brighten that area. The background did not get uh, modified because we did put them in a different layer. Now we have to darken the right side of the image. So I will get out of develop, I'll go back into develop. This time I'll bring the exposure down a little bit and I will use the same radial gradient as a mask and I will just bring down the exposure just on this side, just a little bit, not too much. Something like that. Make sure you invert your gradient and there you go. We'll go to adjustments and there is our before and after, before and after. And that is looking better. So far our edit, this is the before, this is the after. So when we want to bring attention to something in our image, we have three tools that we can work with. That is luminance, color, and contrast. We used our luminance to you know, bring the attention to the face, but now I'm going to work with color. By analyzing this image, you can see it has a lot of warm tones. It has all these golden tones in it. And to make the baker stand out, I am going to apply a color to his sweater, a cool color that is the opposite color of gold. On the color wheel, the opposite of orange will be blue. So I'm going to apply some blue tone to his sweater just to make him stand out a little bit more. To do so, still with my top layer selected, I will go to toning. And then I will increase the amount to 100%. I'll go to highlights, saturation 100%, and I'll pick a hue of blue that I think it will work great to this image. I'll go for this kind of blue. Now I'll reduce the saturation so it doesn't look so strong. And I'll leave the amount to 100%. And now I need to work on my masking. I will take the brush and I will mask in just the sweater. To do so, first I would like to zoom in a little bit so I can make a more accurate selection. When I do masking, I like to keep my uh, softness of the brush just around 20%. I feel like that is just soft, but it's not too harsh, but it's not too soft either, and it just makes a better masking. Now I will paint this blue, and I don't have to be very accurate on the outside. That's why we mask the man 
first because now I can go, you see, even if I go in the background, it doesn't get affected because we removed the background from this layer. And this really will speed out my workflow a lot more. So there we go. We're just doing a rough selection first. And then we'll make our brush smaller and we'll go into the more detailed area, go around the edges and try to make a, as a precise selection as we can of this sweater. When you go too far, go back to erase and erase the parts that you went over. Go back to paint and keep on painting your effect. Here is a little trick. When you get to very sharp, sharp corners like this, just paint over it and then take your erase brush and make your painting like that and that makes it a lot easier. Go back to painting and keep on painting. It really, it looks very, it looks really tedious, but it's a lot easier than you think. All right, we're almost done with this side. The better you make your selection, the better results you'll get. Don't forget to go inside the buckle over here. Just very, very small brush. Go in there. There we go. Here is another little uh, small tip for you. When you have a straight line like this, just click once, hold down shift, click on the bottom and you'll get a straight line. There we go. Almost done, you guys. It is totally worth it, I promise. Just keep going between the erase and paint tool to accurately make your selections. Now I will speed up through this process so you don't have to sit here and watch me do this and I will see you in a second. And now that we have all of our selection done, go command zero to fit to screen. And we have this awesome blue. Now we have the masking and to toning. And if I go to masking and go to mask action, 
I can actually copy this mask and then take it into my color panel and I'll go to masking and paste it. And now I have so much more control over my color. I can go to hue shift and I can make this sweater whatever color I want, but I will stick with blue because I do believe it works the best with this image. I can, you know, work with saturation, with vibrance, with whatever tools I need to adjust this to more, make it work with my image. So let's see so far, this is our edit so far from the beginning. This is the before, this is the after. It's looking great. Now, another thing I need to do, we worked with luminance, we worked with color, let's work with contrast. So with my subject selected, I will just go into develop and I will apply a little bit of smart contrast and that will just bring our attention even more to our subject. I think our subject looks wonderful and now we can work on the background. With the background selected, I would just like to maybe create a little bit of vignette and to do so, my favorite tool for it is develop. I will take the exposure down just a tiny little bit and then use, of course, a radial gradient. And this way, I can just adjust it and put it wherever I want. I guess a nice, soft feathering to it. And there you go. This is our gradient before and after. One more thing I like to do is these pastries over here on the table, they are beautiful, but I feel like maybe they are just a tiny little bit too bright and it kind of distracts my eye. It makes it go on the edge of the image and I want my eye to go right in the middle of the image to my subject. So to do so, I will go back and develop and maybe take down the exposure just a tiny little bit. And this way I will use a linear gradient just to darken that bottom portion a little bit, just like that. And this is our image now before and after. It is so much you can do with local adjustments. And let's see maybe one more thing and that's it. I'll go back to my subject, to the top layer. Let's say we want to put some highlights in his hair and beard to just draw the attention to him even more. To do so, I will go into toning again. And this time I will increase the amount to 100% and to the highlights 100% and hue. I just want to pick a nice golden tone, something like that. I will decrease the saturation, of course. And now masking, I will just use a brush and I will zoom in very tightly and apply some small strokes of highlights into his hair. I want to stay kind of where he already has highlights in the hair. We'll just bring them out a little bit. There you go. Maybe we'll add some in his beard too, just to kind of, you know, make it a little bit more interesting. There you go. And now that we have this um, toning into it, this is the before and after. Now I would like to go to masking and I would like to copy this mask. And then I'll go to develop and I will paste my mask. And in the adjustments, I will just increase the exposure just a little bit to make those highlights a little bit brighter. Let's go back to fit to screen and this is our edit before and after, before and after. And this is how you can use local adjustments to bring your photos to life.